Welcome back to Rocky Mountain Prepper. I'm Bellum. We are continuing today in our study of the Bible. Uh, there'll be a link to the playlist at the end, so you can watch the whole thing. I call this section the Strong Foundation, because without a strong foundation of faith, it doesn't matter how much preps you have, you are not going to survive. All right. I encourage everybody to read their own Bibles while I'm reading this, and I will explain what I can as I can. When last we left off, we had just heard about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, and what Lot's daughters, thinking that everyone was, all the rest of humanity was dead, did in order to propagate the species. Yes, it ended up a Jerry Springer episode. And because of that, it is discouraged, it was discouraged uh, when they, when the people of Israel came into, go into Israel, go into the promised land after being in Egypt, it is discouraged that they marry anybody from what is now Jordan because those people are descended from the children of Seth. In my opinion, they should have talked to their father. Their father would have been like, okay, well, let's go see if we can find it. My, my, my kinsman Abraham, he may have survived it, survived the destruction. We, we can go find him, and he'll find you guys some husbands. He'll have some people that... Some good men that you could have husbands with. That's what I think they should have done. <laughs> but as we read, what they did do was very nasty and disgusting. They got pregnant. The two daughters got pregnant by their father. All right, so let's open up our Bibles and continue on. We're in Genesis. 20, which in Hebrew it would be Bereshit 20. And Abraham set out from there to the land of the south and sojourned between Kadesh and Shur and stayed in Gerar. And Abraham said concerning Sarah, his wife, She is my sister. And Abimelech, sovereign of Gerir, set and looked and took uh, set and took Sarah. But Elohim came to Abimelech in a dream by night and said to him, See, you are a dead man because of the woman whom you have taken, for she is a man's wife. However, Abimelech had not come near her, and said, and he said, Yahweh, would you kill a righteous nation also? Did he not say to me, she is my sister, and she and she even herself said, He is my brother. In the iniquity of my heart, or integrity of my heart, I apologize, and in the innocence of my hands, I have done this. And Elohim said to him in a dream, Yes, I know that you did this in the integrity of your heart, and so I keep you from uh, and so I keep you from sinning against me. For this reason I did not let you touch her. Basically, God said, Hey, you screwed up. This woman belongs to someone else. And he said and Abimelech said, Hey, he said that he she was his sister. And she even said that he's her brother. 
I, I meant, I'm not at fault here. And God basically said, I know. Yeah, that's true. Why do you think I kept you from touching her? Every time you were about to, I had something come up in your mind and you went to do something else. See? I'm trying to keep you safe here, buddy. God does that a lot in our lives and we don't recognize it. Perhaps we should. Let's continue then. And now, return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and let him pray for you, and you live. But if you do not return her, know that you shall certainly die, and uh, you shall certainly die, you and all that are yours. That could be a lot of people, considering he was a king. So Abimelech rose early in the morning and called all his servants and spoke all the words of in their hearing and the men were greatly frightened. Something we should all ha be whenever dealing with God. We should have a healthy fear of God. And Abimelech called Abraham and said to him, What have you done to us? In what have I sinned against you that you have brought on me all and all my reign a great sin? You have done matters to me that should not have been done. And Abimelech, Abimelech said to Abraham, What did you... What did you have in view that you have done this matter. And Abraham said, Only because I said to myself, The fear of Elohim is not in this place, and they shall kill me for the sake of my wife. And yet, she is truly my sister. She is the daughter of my father, but not the daughter of my mother. And she became my wife. It's a little sticky, a little icky, but the closer we get to create back to creation, the less we have genetic impurities popping up and uh, genetic diseases and all the little uh, little genetic defects that can be magnified by siblings having children with siblings. Like nowadays, two siblings have kids, there's a lot of issues that can come up with that. Because those two children have so many similar genetic defects that if they were to have kids with someone not related, those defects would more than likely not show up. But having children with your, with your siblings, those genetic defects will show up. So, back then, it wasn't as big of an issue. Let's go on now. <laughs> and it came to be when Elohim cursed me to wander, or caused me to wander from my father's house, that I said to her, This is your loving commitment that you should do for me. In every place where we go, say of me, he is my brother. Then Abimelech took sheep and cattle and male and female servants and gave them to Abraham. And he returned Sarah, his wife, to him. And Abimelech said, See, my land is before you. Dwell wherever it is good in your eyes. And to Sarah he said, See, I have given your brother a thousand pieces of silver. See, it is to you a covering of eyes before all who are with you and before all others, and you are cleared before everyone. Basically, he's saying, I'm breaking off the relationship we had. Here's some compensation for you. 
I did not want I do not want anything bad to come between your household and mine. And Abraham prayed to Elohim, and Elohim healed Abimelech and his wife and his female servants, so they bore children. The punishment was God made it so none of the people there in that in that ruler's household could have kids. It said it just said what the punishment was for taking Sarah. And God is in control of our reproduction. He will close up the womb of any woman he chooses to, for whatever reason, but he will also open the wombs of all those he chooses. And Abraham prayed, oh, wait, I did that, um, the children for Yahweh had closed up all the wombs of the house of Abimelech because of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Genesis 21. And Yahweh visited Sarah, as he had said, and Yahweh did for Sarah as he had spoken. So Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the appointed time of which Elohim had spoken to him. And Abraham called on the name of I called the name of his son, who was born to him, whom Sarah had born to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as Elohim had commanded him. And Abraham was one hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. And Sarah said, Elohim has made me laugh, and everyone who hears it of it laughs with me. And she said, Who have uh, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, for I have borne him a son in his old age? And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast on the day that Isaac was weaned. It's a good celebration to have. I still think it's amazing that she was in her 80s or 90s when I when Isaac was born. So all of you out there who are struggling to have children, there is hope. Keep praying. God will give you children when it is his time to give you children. And Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Mitzrayite, Egyptian, whom she had borne to Abraham, mocking. Basically, that just says that Hagar was mocking uh, Sarah because she had already had a child from Sarah, uh, for Abraham. So she said to Abraham, Drive out this female servant and her son, for the son of this female servant shall not inherit what my son, uh, inherit with my son Isaac. She doesn't want him having a piece of the pie designated to Isaac. And the matter was very evil in the eyes of Abraham because of his son. But Elohim said to Abraham, let it not be evil in your eyes, because of the boy, and because of your female servant. Whatever Sarah has said to you, listen to her voice. For in Isaac your seed is called. And of the son of the female servant I also make a nation, because he is your seed. And Abraham rose early in the morning, and took bread and a skin of water, which he gave to Hagar, putting it on her shoulder, also the boy, 
and sent her away. And she left and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. Uh, tradition says that is Iraq. That near around uh, Iraq or Iran. Um, could be Saudi Arabia. It's somewhere in the, the Arabian Peninsula. And the water in the skin was used up. And she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. And when she, and then and went back. And she went and sat down about a bowshot away. For she said, Let me not see the death of the boy. And she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. And Elohim heard her voice or heard the voice of the boy, and the messenger of Elohim, angel, called to Hagar from the heavens and said to her, What is the matter with you, Hagar? Do not fear, for Elohim has heard the voice of the boy. Where is he? Or where he is? Arise, lift up the boy, and hold him with your hands, for I make a great nation of you, or of him. And Elohim opened her eyes, and she saw a well of water. And she went and lifted the skin with the water, and gave the boy a drink. This is all the way down, um, I think, I believe it's in Medina, is the well that tradition says that she retrieved the water for him. And um, that, I want to say, is in Saudi Arabia. But all the conflicts right now in the Middle East are just continuations of the feuding between uh, um, from between Isaac and his brother. Yes, the current wars in the Middle East are just sibling squabble. A sibling squabble, squabble that has gone way, way, way too long. Um, and Elohim was with the boy, and and he grew, and dwelt in the wilderness, and became an archer. And he dwelt in the wilderness of Paran, Paran, and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Mitzrayim. She got one from Egypt, like she was. And it came to be at that time that Abimelech and Pichol, the commander of his army, spoke to Abraham, saying, Elohim is with you, uh, is with you in all that you do. And now swear to me by Elohim not to be untrue to me, to the off, to my, uh, to me, to my offspring, or to my descendants. Do to me according to the loving commitment that you have done, that I have done to you. And to the land in which you have sojourned. And Abraham said, "I swear." And Abraham reproved Abimelech because of the a well of water which Abimelech's servants had seized. And Abimelech said, I do not know who has done this deed. Neither did you inform me, nor did I hear it until today. So Abraham took sheep and cattle and gave them to Abimelech, and two of them, and the two of them made a covenant. And Abraham set seven ewe lambs of the flock by themselves. And Abimelech asked Abraham, What are these seven ewe lambs which 
you have set by themselves. And he said, Take these seven ewe lambs from my hand to be witness that I have dug this well. Basically, he's giving up his own property to, to show, hey, I'm being honest with you. See, I'm giving you stuff. I'm giving you my property, my these sheep, so that you can... Uh, so you know that I'm being honest. Because that's a lot of food right there. And the wool on that is worth a lot of money as well. So he's basically giving up quite a bit here. So he called the that place... Shiva, because the two of them swore an oath there. Thus they made a covenant at Beersheba, and Abimelech rose and uh, rose with Pichol, the commander of his army, and they returned to the land of the Philistines. And he planted a timeric tree in Beersheba, and there called the name called on the name of Yahweh, the everlasting El. And Abraham sojourned in the land of the Philistine many days. 22. And it came to be after these events that Elohim tried Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, Here I am. And he said, Take your son now, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Morai, and offer him there and as, as an ascending offering on one of the mountains which I command you. And Abraham rose early in the morning, and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the ascending offering, and arose, and went to the place. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. Uh, the place which Elohim had commanded him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place from a distance. So Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey while the boy and I go over there and worship and come back to you. And Abraham took the wood of the ascending offering and laid it on Isaac his son and took the fire in his hand and a knife. And the two of them went together. And Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, he said, and he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, See, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the ascending offering? And Abraham said, My son, Elohim does provide for himself the lamb for an ascending offering. And the two of them went together. I don't know if I'd be able to do that. I honestly don't. I'd be questioning God at that point. It shows the devotion Abraham has. And they went to the place which Elohim had commanded and had commanded him and Abraham built the slaughter place there, and placed the wood in the... in... placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son, and laid him on the slaughter place upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand, and took the knife to slay his son. But the messenger of Yahweh, the angel of Yahweh, called to him from the heavens and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here I am. 
And he said, Do not lay your hand on the boy, nor touch him. For now I know that you fear Elohim, seeing, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and saw behind him a ram caught in a bush by its horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for an ascending offering instead of his son. That's also a lesson for us to know that God will not take our children as sacrifice. It is actually an abominable practice and a great sin, according late, mentioned later in the Bible, that you sacrifice children. Human sacrifice is not condoned by God. He only wanted one human, and that was his son. And he even provided that himself. Just like he provided the lamb, in this case, with Abraham. Some nice little parallels to Christ. Jesus is the lamb of God. God provided a lamb right here. Let's go on from there. And Abraham called the name of of the place uh, Yahweh Yahir, which is said, which it is said to this day, on the mountain of Yah, on the mountain Yahweh provides. And the messenger of Yahweh called to Abraham a second time from the heavens, and said, By myself I have sworn, declares Yahweh, because you have done this, and you have not withheld your son, your only son, that I shall certainly bless you, and I shall certainly increase your seed as the stars of the heavens, and as the sand which is on the seashore. And let your seed uh, possess the gates of their enemies. Now that's actually poignant, because in ancient times, we don't deal with that today, because the gates, uh, cities don't have gates anymore. Uh, their walled cities are kind of pointless with modern artillery and aircraft. But um, back then, you, if you possessed the gates, you controlled the city. So God, and this is actually saying, your enemies will not control their cities. Your people will. The people of the descendants of Abraham will control the cities of their enemies, meaning they will overpower them. And that's also a great lesson to us today. Telling us if God is with us because we follow his word, then the enemies cannot prevail against us. And in your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed, because you have obeyed my voice. And truly, because of Abraham's offspring, we are all blessed. We are blessed through Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. Then Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt there at Beersheba. And it came to be after these events that it was reported to Abraham, saying, See, uh, Milcah, too, has borne children to your, to your brother Nashor. Utes, his firstborn, and Buzz, his brother, and Uh, Quamel, the father of Aram, and Keshted, and 
Hazor, Hazor, and Fildesh and Yedela and Bethuel. And Bethel brought forth Rabaha, whose oh, these eight Milcah bore to Naor, Abraham's brother, and his concub well, and his to his brother, Abraham's brother, and his concubine, whose name was Wow, um, I cannot pronounce that, but I'll try. Um, Ryu Welma also bore Tethba and Garam and Tesha and Milka. <sighs> Some of these names. All right, Genesis twenty three. And Sarah lived one hundred and twenty seven years, the years of the life of Sarah. And Sarah lived in Quareth Arba, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan, and Abraham came to mourn for Sarah and to weep for her. Then Abraham rose from his bedside, uh, from his, oh, from beside his dead, and spoke to the sons of Heth saying, I am a sojourner and a settler among you. Give me property for a burial site among you, so that I may that I bury my dead from my presence. And the sons of Heth answered Abraham, saying, Hear us, my master, you are a prince of Elohim among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of burial sites. None of us withholds from you his burial site for, from burying your dead. Basically, they're saying, Dude, you're more powerful than us. God loves you. Take whichever burial plot you want. We'll find another one for ourselves later. Uh... So Abraham rose and bowed himself to the people of the land, the sons of Heth. And he spoke with them, saying, if it, is, if it is your desire that I bury my dead from my presence, hear me, and approach Ephraim, son of Tezar, for me. And let me have the cave of Mechpedah, which he has, which is at the end of his field. Let him give it to me for the complete amount of silver as property for a burial site among you. Basically, that's saying, here, let me have, uh, let me buy this bit of land. It's got a cave on it that would be perfect to bury my dead. I'll pay whatever you want in silver. And Ephraim dwelt among the sons of Heth, and Ephraim the Hittite answered Abraham in the hearing of the sons of Heth, all who entered the gates of his city, saying, No, my master, listen to me. I shall give you the field and the cave that is in it. I shall give it to you in the presence of the sons of my people. I shall give it to you. Bury your dead. And Abraham bowed himself down before the people of the land. And he spoke to Elohim, or to Ephraim, in the hearing of the people of the land, saying, If only I would 
uh, oh, if only you would hear me. I shall give amount. I shall give the amount of silver for the field. Take it from me, and let me bury my dead there. And Ephraim answered Abraham, saying to him, My master, listen to me. This land is worth four hundred shekels of silver. What is that between you and me? So, so bury your dead. And Abraham listened to Ephraim, and Abraham weighed out the silver for Ephraim, which he had named in the hearing of the sons of Heth, four hundred shekels of silver, uh, currency of the merchants. This is pretty interesting. The guy was going to give it to him, but Abraham refused. He didn't want a gift uh, from them. He wanted to pay for pay for it. He had the money. It's not like he was a poor man. And he had to kind of convince him a bit. Uh, Thus the field of Ephraim, which is in Mechpelah, which was before Maiar, the field and the cave which is in it, and all the trees that were in the field which were within the surrounding borders, were deeded. Uh, were deeded to Abraham as a possession in the presence of the sons of of Heth before all though before all who went at the gates of the of his city. And Abraham, or and. And after Abraham buried Sarah, his wife, in the cave of the field of Machpelah, before Minar, that is Hebron, in the land of Canaan, thus the field and the cave that is in, in it were deeded to Abraham by the sons of Heth as property for a burial site. All right. We'll stop there for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you got a lot out of this. Please do not forget to like, share, and subscribe. I thank you all for watching. And God bless all of you.